on today's episode. Welcome. Here I show repairs I've done and share the techniques and tools that I use. If you find this video valuable or even entertaining, uh, please subscribe as it really helps. It's great to get your feedback, so leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that like button. Also check out the description below because there'll be additional information and some useful links. So in uh, my previous video on the Geiger counter, I showed how to take the output from the, uh, the module and square it up using a, a mono stable so that we've got a nice square wave to feed into our Arduino to, uh, to be able to count it. And in this video, we're taking that a step further by developing the Arduino code to show the resultant counts per minute. And from that, calculate the uh, micro sieverts per, per hour or the, the dose or dosage. Uh, so uh, this will be going through those, those steps. Uh, so obviously we need some way of driving this LCD panel from the Arduino. So we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, this here is just the adjustment for the, the contrast on there. So I found um, some good information on various uh, websites and, and, and videos on the, on the internet. Uh, one of which I'll, I'll link to down in, in the description was the most useful for me. Although I do have a few questions about it which I'll, I'll uh, take you through. So um, let's take a look at the, at the code um, that's written now for the Arduino and to uh, get the display working. So here we can see our Arduino sketch and the first thing we need to do is to include the uh, library to drive the little liquid crystal display and define the, the pins that we're going to be using to address it. Um, I'll, I'll show how that um, physically works uh, in the next part. And then the interesting bit here is the conversion factor from the counts per minute to uh, micro sieverts. Now, as I mentioned, um, there was a very good web page that um, has a general description of um, how the tubes work, what they look like, and the types of radiation. Uh, it should be noted that the, the tube I'm using uh, cannot detect the um, the alpha waves. They're just um, too too uh, low in uh, in strength, and even a, a piece of paper will 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 block those. So we're only going to be detecting the gamma and and, and beta rays. Uh, so it tells you a, a bit about uh, that sort of thing there. Now they have elected to use the same tube that um, that I have, which is is fortunate, and it gives you all the the technical details there and shows you the uh, various items that you can use to test it. Uh, the alpha is not applicable in our case. Um, but if we scroll on down, it gives us the, uh, the calculation to go from the counts per minute to, to sieverts. And uh, it's quite a simple calculation that they've, they've done there. Now this was one thing um, that I, I do question. Um, here is their example of counts per minute equals 30 and the micro sieverts. Now as far as my calculator goes, um, if we take 30 and we multiply it by the conversion factor, it actually comes out to 0.2436 and nowhere near 0 0.043. So I don't know where they get that number from. Equally, the, the, the picture above showing the, the 53 is, is, is not correct either. I can only assume that um, they were actually using a different tube in this instance with a, a different conversion factor. But we're going to go ahead and use this, this number here, the 00812. And I found on other websites as well that that's the, uh, the, correct, uh, the correct conversion factor for this tube. So getting back into the code now, the next thing that we do is to declare our, our variables, which are obviously the input pin, um, a variable to count, counts per minute, and all those things that you can read. And in our setup, we are obviously defining the, the, the pin modes and attaching the interrupt, as we saw before, to pin 2, and calling a routine called count pulse on the rising edge. Um, after that, in the setup, 
we define the liquid crystal columns and rows and we just print out a little test message saying Arduino and a Geiger counter. Then comes our, our loop function, so this is just, just going to go round and round, and that calls the routine called show CPM and CVERTs. Now we're into our interrupt routine below here, so count pulse, as you remember, is called from the interrupt, and it flashes the LED on board, and it also increments the, the counter. So the next part of the code um, is to show the counts per minute and uh, the micro sieverts. So what it does is to take a 10 second um, window, which it derives from the millisecond counter on, on board the Arduino, rounds that number up, does six times 10 seconds to give you the counts per minute. Uh, then the counts per minute are multiplied by the conversion factor that we saw before. And just as a bit of debugging, um, I find it useful to be able to uh, set the, the serial port up and be able to get the information outputted there. So that will come out if you use the, the serial monitor. And then into our simple routine to show those values on the LCD itself. So we set the cursor to the beginning of the top line, print CPM, space it over, show the counts per minute go down to the uh, the second line and print the radiation value followed by micro sieverts per, per hour. We then delay for three seconds before going back. And that's, um, that's simply it. So I'll go on now and um, show you the, uh, the physical construction of the, of the LCD and the connections to the Arduino. And we'll go from there. So here we can see the uh, connections to the LCD panel. I'm not going to go into huge detail. There's uh, enough, uh, enough information on, on the web uh, just to confirm that the, uh, the RS pin is going to pin 3 on the Arduino. Uh, the enable, that goes to pin 4. And then simply the four address lines, uh, which are D4 through to D7, actually go to pin 5, 6, 7 and 8 on the Arduino as you saw defined in the in the sketch. So that's very simple. So having uh, breadboarded the, the design with the Arduino Uno, um, I'm going to put the monostable circuit and the connections for the LCD and going to change the uh, the Arduino for one of these um, mini guys uh, so that will be much more compact and I think we'll power it from uh, one of these old um, cell phone batteries. Um, I measured the circuits, the whole thing um, doesn't take more than 10 milliamps so um, uh, this is a 1650 milliamp hour battery uh, so that will last us uh, a sufficient length of time. So these little glass um, beads are what's called Vaseline glass, uh, so named because uh, it apparently the, has a, a similar appearance to Vaseline, can't quite see it myself, but there you go. Now this was popular in the, in the 1930s, it's, the glass has actually got a tiny uh, trace of, of uranium in it, and one of the other uh, things is that um, you can tell it's Vaseline glass because under a UV light, you can see that it um, is uh, fluorescent. I turn the light out now, we can see the effect better. And uh, I originally bought this UV torch um, to find these little guys. So, um, interesting point of the day, uh, if you didn't know, scorpions are in fact uh, fluorescent as well. So, uh, there we go, but not apparently radioactive. Now, when brought um, very close to the to the tube, we can see that the the, the counts uh, increase. So that's a, a another thing that we can use to test. So now I'm going to prototype um, with some some veriboard to put the 
uh, the LCD on and the, and the mono stable, and uh, I'll show you how that uh, turns out. Just before I get on with the build, um, a couple of uh, suggestions and, and, and tips. Um, I'm using this particular LCD really because it just came with one of the uh, Arduino starter kits that I bought. And um, as we saw, it just uses the four um, data lines to, to address the display. Um, if I was going to do this from scratch, I would either buy the IC squared version of this or, or SPI and go for perhaps even an, an OLED display. That seems to be the, the future. Um, another tip, uh, the cable that I'm going to be using to, to wire it up, um, this came out of an old um, computer tower system. So I never pass one on the street or throw one out without taking the, uh, the, the connection, the cables out of it. Um, this is obviously the connections to the, to the motherboard for the, the, the little buzzer. There's a the push button there that would have been for the, the reset and a couple of LEDs. So this, this cable and the connections always come in useful. There's a, another, another one there. Again, LEDs, a little push button. No buzzer with that one. Uh, also the USB. I mean, this isn't the USB, but it's the same, same size. Um, usually the older the system, the better, uh, as on the USBs, they uh, quite often had individual um, DuPont or Molex connectors, uh, which you can, you can recycle being the uh, consummate pack rat that I am. So here we can see uh, almost the, the final build. I transferred the sketch from the Arduino Uno onto this uh, Arduino Mini clone. Uh, you can see here the, the circuit for the uh, cleaning up of the, of the waveform from the counter itself. And that square wave goes obviously into the Arduino and I explained uh, how to modify the sketch there to use one of the alternative outputs. It doesn't have the same pin arrangement as the, as the Uno. Uh, I've elected to go for the different colour of, um, of the 1602A LCD. I thought this might be uh, more, more legible outside. We'll, we'll find out. And finally, uh, down here, we can see I've got the old uh, mobile phone battery and to charge that um, I've got a little TP4056 board that has a uh, mini USB connection on it and then that uh, voltage from the battery say from 3.7 to 4.2 is then boosted by this um, I think this is an XL6009 boost converter you'll find links as always down in the in the description there and uh, so I'm going to get it built now into uh, into a suitable case and that will be ready for the, the field trips. So here we can see the, uh, the, the finished, uh, finished unit now. Uh, I've used this um, electrical trunking type box. I thought it had a, a very nice uh, sort of industrial feel to it, if we will. And we've got a little on off switch at the top there. Obviously I've made a cutout for the, uh, the LCD display and we've got a our USB charging port there. So if we fire the guy up now, I've added um, a little bit to the software. Um, I thought it would be quite uh, interesting to know the total time that the, um, the the counter has been running for, and also the total number of of, of counts. So um, that you can see that incrementing there, and obviously we've got our our counts per minute and the conversion to micro sieverts. Now, I'm not quite ready to go out into the field just yet. Um, I would like to, to check this against a commercial unit. So I've arranged to, to, to borrow one and we'll just check um, before I start scaring other people or myself um, with, the, with the values that I'm getting that, uh, that they're um, in, the right, uh, in the right order of magnitude at least. Um, very pleased with the way the display works. So I've actually tried this outside in full sunlight and it's uh, completely legible. Um, I think perhaps the, uh, the blue uh, with the white lettering that I started with uh, might, have, might have struggled under those conditions, but uh, this is working well. So if we just um, switch it off temporarily, uh, if we look inside, we can see clearly that um, 
the board is uh, down the bottom there and the arrangement in the top with the the charging board uh, at the top there the 40 TP4056 and then the little boost converter just um, sat on top of the battery there with some uh, some uh, of the ubiquitous um, hot melt glue and the display and obviously the uh, the circuit board there that you've seen before now if I was going to do this again you know, what would I change well I'm thinking perhaps um, as I mentioned before if I was going to do this again the display um, at least I would I would go for an I squared C or SPI type um, to cut down on the on the wiring and the number of pins used on the on the Arduino we might use those for other other functions and uh, I would definitely go with the uh, the, the the yellow backlit uh, version uh, or, or even possibly go to uh, an OLED display which would be would be nice um, this here is a bit uh, a bit over the top I think um, I've I found some combined uh, USB chargers plus boost converter boards which are much uh, a much more elegant solution so I'll be checking those out so watch for that in a in a future future video and um, what else can I do it would be interesting to maybe make an external probe with the the tube mounted in the in the box here I mean that's 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 fine I don't think it's gonna be a problem but it might be nice to have an external probe and maybe even find a, a mica mica fronted tube so that um, we could measure the alpha particles as well as the beta and, and, and gamma so for the moment um, that's a wrap uh, as I say I'll be going out into the field I'll be going down to, to Palomares and checking out the local uh, marble quarries and uh, that will be in a, in a, in a follow-up video because I really want to be able to check the, the unit against a, a commercial version um, before we get um, too carried away it's got a nice sample there. The background count. Um, it seems to be in the right sort of uh, ballpark. If you look on the on the internet, the background radiation levels, I think, should give you uh, f uh, 10, 10 micro sieverts per day. So the hourly rate, um, you're looking at, um, say, around no, 0.4. So um, that's with this with this sample as well. If we put that to, to one side, um, the, the background uh, radiation here averages probably around um, 30 to 40 counts per minute. So that's um, well below um, the, uh, the, the daily dosage. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, watch out for that follow-up video too.